Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rossley Pearson, as known as Ross, obviously as known as Rossley TV, as known as the boss. Okay. Now, this is my review on Survivor Series 2013. I can definitely say this: this is the worst pay per view of the year, definitely by far. This Survivor Series was the shit Survivor Series I've ever fucking seen in my life. It's the 27th annual annual of Survivor Series. And it turns out to be absolute shite. I mean, first you got the first match, which was pretty good. Which was the pre-match with Kofi Kingston versus The Miz. The Miz picked up the victory by using the figure four leg lock onto Kofi Kingston. That's what I believed it is, because I didn't watch the full match. Anyway, back then into the pay-per-view itself. Roman Reigns was the badass of that match. Five, a, a traditional five, um, five on five Survivor Series match. And... Roman Reigns eliminated four, four members of the opposite team, and that was epic. An epic ending for a great wrestler. For And the really thing that really pissed me off about that match is Dean Ambrose was eliminated first. What the fuck? Triple H, you definitely do not know what's best for business, because Dean Ambrose is a fucking lad and such a great wrestler, in, in, and he's got a great ability in the ring. So why the fuck did he eliminate him so quick? Really? It's... it's I mean, the whole thing was just badly done, and it just pissed me off. But at the end of the day, she, I thought Shield were going to break up this tonight because it's been a year. It's about literally been a year now since they debuted from last year's Survivor Series, and now they're not. They're, they're still together, so, so it's pretty cool. But I don't know what's going to happen. And then after that, there's the Total Divas match. Oh, for fuck's sake! I cannot fucking stand this Total Divas shit. I mean. What happened to the Divas? What happened to good old Trish Stratus, Lita, Victoria, all those fucking Divas back in the day, like in 2006, back in the aggressive, what, the aggressive era, what, what, as I like to call it, or the attitude era, whatever you want to call it. But you look at them back in the day, they're like fucking fantastic and they're great in wrestling and they've got a great ability in the ring. Now you've got this crap. I mean, Toll Divas, you've got Toll Divas. Add sluts <laughs> equals a load of shit. You look at wrestlers, women, in women wise. I'm not trying to be sexist, but come on. You look at re um, divas back in the day, like Mae Young, were the great, were the greatest divas of all time. Women wrestlers, like Michelle McCool. She didn't, she didn't look like a slut. Leia doesn't look like a slut when she wrestles. She's a good wrestler. Where the fuck is she? Karma. She's not a fucking slut. But when you look at Summer Rae. Or you look at Kelly Kelly, or you look at fucking um, Naomi, or whatever her name is, and you look at the Bella Twins, you look at fucking... Oh, it's just, it's just stupid. What is going on, WWE, with the Divas division? AJ, for another example, I cannot stand AJ. She is a low shit. And, I mean, yeah, I'll give her credit. I don't like her. But the thing is, she actually brings something quite good to the Divas division, because she actually makes it quite interesting. But... The really bad thing about this, it was it was a it was a it was, a, it was a quite surprising when I first heard about it. It was a it was a traditional Survivor Series Divas match, five on five. I think I think it was about five on five. Natalia picked up the win by doing the sharpshooter on um, on Tamina and to AJ, and AJ was just being a wuss as usual in in our matches. And AJ and AJ has just been a bitch. And Natalia is the boss. Yeah, of course, Natalia is a fucking boss. So she picked up the victory, which declaims a Divas title shot, and hopefully she'll fucking win it, because Natalia deserves a title. She deserves a title way hell of a lot more than AJ, because she's worked there longer, and yeah, she's talented. I mean, yeah, they could, they both could bring a pretty good match. And then after that match, I believe, um, was the Intercontinental title match, with Biggie Langston, the current Intercontinental champion. Versus the former champion, uh, Curtis Axel. Now, this match was, wasn't was that bad. I mean, um, the, the pace was quite quick. It wasn't... I mean, Gabigi Langston, for the size, he's a huge lad. He's about close to 300 pounds, and he can move like a motherfucker. He's like, well, the fastest, biggest man I've ever seen in my life. I mean, like, when you see guys like Goldberg or Brock Lesnar... Brock Lesnar's incredible when he's in the ring. Or especially in MMA and all that shit like that. And Batista and all that sort of stuff. But... Biggie Langston is something else. He's close to 300 pounds. That is a lot of weight. And as a he and 
you must do a shitload of work to get that fast, you know what I mean? So, back to the matter at hand. Biggie Langston won with the big ending, and it was a pretty good match, and a pretty good ending for the match. Curtis Axel, I don't know what's going to happen with Curtis Axel now. In honor to get Curtis Axel back into title reigns, is to have to, it has to be with Paul Heyman again. I cannot see a guy like Curtis Axel being big now, because... Because with that massive, it was quite a long title reign when he had the Intercontinental title. It, it, the thing is, we, we, the WWE doesn't know what to do with him now. Now, now he's lost the Intercontinental title. What's next for him? Now, that's what that's what it is with everyone. All right. After that, the World Heavyweight Title match, John Cena versus Alberto Rio. Now, there's several reasons why I hate this, and the reason why it was obvious that Cena was going to win it. The number one bad thing is that how uh, John Cena won it, but I'm not saying because John Cena won, because it was obvious, they used the exact same ending and with the counter to the cross sun break into the attitude just from one, two, three to pick up the win. They did the exact same thing from the Hell in the Cell match. What the fuck? You couldn't at least let Alba the real kick out of one attitude adjustment, at least. But no. So fucking stupid. About the Rio was, I mean, the good thing about the match is that he was acting like, oh, what, what can I do to end this match? And, and, and I'm just like, for fuck's sake, this, this is pathetic now. Because, I mean, the match was just, the match was just shit. It was a terrible match. And the crowd, the crowd didn't even like it. Sorry, pardon me. Um, then comes the next match. I believe the next match was CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Versus the Wyatts, CM Punk hit the GTS to pick up the win, and the match was all right. It wasn't the crowd was all right for the match. It wasn't it wasn't exactly fast paced. I mean, I don't blame Punk and Brian. You look at the Wyatts; they are huge. They are huge gentlemen. You look at them; they're like seven foot, and they're like, all right, I want to do a suplex on you. All right, good luck on that one, mate. It's, they're fucking huge. I mean. I mean, yeah, they, they made a massive impact in WWE, but what, what is going on with the Wyatts? I mean, um, they got pushed. Obviously, they're being pushed with the big mid-card leagues, Danny Bryan and CM Punk. But the question is, what is next for the Wyatts? The Wyatts, I believe, I'm a Punk fan, and I'm a Danny Bryan fan. But the problem is with this feud, the Wyatts should have won. If the Wyatts won, it would have been good booking. Personally, because they could have they moved to something else with TLC. Danny Bryan and CM Punk could make the feud more interesting, do more segments, attack the Wyatts, the Wyatts attack Punk and Bryan, and then they come up to a TLC match for a tag team match. But personally, for, for Survivor Series, it should have been a, it should have been our, I think it was um, the Usos, Goldust and Cody Rhodes, Danny Bryan and CM Punk versus the Shield and, and the Wyatt family. That's how, that's how it should have ended, because I went to Manchester and that's how I bought this fucking shirt. And there's the tickets on my wall right there. And that event was awesome because we were ch chanting, yes, this is awesome. When the Wyatts and the Shield were about to attack CM Punk and Danny Bryan. And it was epic. It should have been that. That's a Survivor Series. But unfortunately not. Here comes the main event. <sighs> Worst main event to Survivor Series. Bret Hart, I feel extremely sorry for you. That you were there to witness and watch that load of shit. Triple H and, and Stephanie McMahon, in the very beginning of the pay per view, when the pay per view was first announced, they said there would be no interference. The match was just going on as usual. The crowd was very bored. I don't really blame them. Um, Triple H, no, Triple H, sorry. Randy Orton and Big Show were just going at it, and they were just wrestling and just shit. It's just the same old, same old crap. It's basically, this match was even worse than the Extreme Rules match back in St. Louis when Randy Orton was a face. It was absolutely shite. I mean, I watched the match, and it was terrible. And then later, like, at the end of the match, um, Big Show, uh, the referee gets knocked over, Charles Robinson. And then Big Show throws Randy Orton over the barricade. And then suddenly, uh, Big Show hits him with a knockout punch and all that shit. And then... Triple H comes out while while Big Show is putting Randy Orton back in the ring. Charles Robinson gets up and Triple H says, Triple H and Stephanie, my man, and Kane are just watching. And Big Show's like, oh, you mess around, I'm going to punch you. And shit like that. And then, and then Randy Orton hits the RKO 
and then Big Show sells the punt extremely badly. The punt is back. I mean, yeah, the punt's back. The punt, sorry. The punt is back. But the thing is, the Big Show sold it. Oh my god, it was terrible. I mean, he literally moved his head before he actually kicked his head. Like, like, let's say this is his leg here. He literally moved it, and then the and then he just went storming to the turnbuckle to stop, and then he just covered him one, two, three. Worst ending to Survivor Series ever. Now, here's a question to you: Was this the worst Survivor Series of all time? Personally, yes, it fucking is. And second. Where's Dolph Ziggler? Where's Dolph Ziggler? Why, where the fuck is he? I, I didn't even see him in this PPV. And because I'd, I watched this on Sportsman, fucking lags were everywhere. It was ridiculous. I, I, I mean, I missed quite a lot of the PPV, but I do know the results. Match in the night, we'll probably have to go to the f uh, traditional five man, um, five on five tag team match. And the, 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 the man of the, the pay per view has to go to Roman Reigns because he he made history rather right made history uh, by um, I think I think he's the only man who eliminated four of um, the opposite team in the Survivor Series traditional match, which is pretty cool actually. Because when you look at the Shield, they are the future. You look at guys at Cena. You don't you watch the guys of Cena. Of course, there's a, there's a lot of fans. It's, I'm a, I'm a fan of Cena. I'm not a massive fan, but I do like him. I like CM Punk, I like Daniel Bryan. The CM Punk, I don't know how long he's going to be in the WWE now. But when he's over his 40s, he's going to go off a bit. Same with Cena. And Daniel Bryan's still quite young. And then, and then comes The Shield. Guys like Antonio Cesaro. Guys like The Shield. And when you look at guys like Roman Reigns, think about it. He's cousins with The Rock. And same, same with The Usos. They're related with Rikishi. Them, t them three people have the biggest advantage of getting the, the top they have. Because look at Orton. Look at Randy Orton. Randy Orton is a third generation superstar who was born, who was brought up into this world by the Bob, uh, the Orton family, which is obviously Bob Orton, the Hall of Famer. And now Randy Orton's the WWE Champion. Now think about that. The Rock was born. He was raised by, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, and I know, I know who he is, but I can't remember his fucking name. Um, uh, Peter Maivia, something like that. And um, I believe that was his grandpa, or it was his dad. And anyway, this, this, it's just generation by generation. So there's um, The Rock's dad's dad. And then there's The Rock's dad. Then there's The Rock and the aggressive era when he won the WWE title countless times. And then comes Roman Reigns, the perfect man. In all honesty, I think Roman Reigns has the biggest opportunity and the biggest advantage of getting to the top because of what the the, the, the past has done for the family, you know what I mean? So like, the Usos and Roman Reigns, to me they're, they're, they have the biggest advantage of becoming big stars in the future, probably in like the five years time. Same with guys with Biggie Langston, Antonio Zazaro, Curtis Axel, maybe, um, even Kofi Kingston. Maybe Kingston, definitely Seth Rollins, and definitely Dean Ambrose. The Shield are the future. Antonio Cesaro, all those guys, all the guys I've just mentioned. CM Punk maybe still involved, and maybe so Daniel Bryan, maybe Cena as well, but I'm not so sure. But what I'm thinking is, is about the future. So, back to the matter at hand. For Survivor Series, I give this rating five out of ten because this pay per view was absolutely shite. Um, actually, I'll give it a three. <laughs> Sorry, but it's just so bad. It was so bad. I don't even know what to give it. You know what I mean? Because the pay per view was just so shit. So fucking shit. <sighs> I mean, I looked at Roman Reigns and his match in the 5 on 5 traditional Survivor Series match. That was brilliant. That was actually really good. Rey Mysterio looked great. He, he lost a lot of weight. He's fast. So. Alright, I'm just going to end it here because I don't want to waste anyone's time. So, yeah, I'll give this pay-per-view a 4.5 out of 10. Alright? So, whatever you think about the pay-per-view, that's your own opinion. And this video is obviously based on my opinion. So, yeah.